<laughs> Off the tea, John. Whiskey. What? Off the tea. Off the tea? With my irons when I'm laying up. When you're laying up? Not on a par three, if it's a par four where you're laying up. So you feel like that's lazy in the membrane, that is. When yeah, I'm from Bolton, so there's a chance. Well, you yeah. ask me a question, I'm just giving you the answer. Yeah, no, there would be. You know, just uh, when you come to lay up and you've got a big thing and you think, I'll just hit it nice and easy. You, no, I mean, really I, and honestly, you relax too much. Yeah, a wide fur when I'm laying up. a bit too blase in you, the whole kind of intensity of the shot that's ahead. And we've all done it before. I mean, how many times have you done that, Andrew? Just got like a an easy layup and you just, just, you know, forget all about it and bugger it up. I mean, it's easily done. You just got to really keep the intensity going from start to finish without question. And then you're just, well, it'd be second nature. Just good shot after good shot. Nine times out of 10, should be anyway. You know, nothing ever is, you know, fine and dandy, is it in this world? Definitely not. This is, this is the, uh, this is the part though. As soon as it all breaks down, this is how you get out of jail. This is where you need to be. I spent my life on a chipping green. I hated the range. I wasn't a range man at all. Didn't like to. I thought it was so boring just standing there, ball after ball. Yeah, it would spray a few places. I thought, no, I want to get on the golf course. And, you know, I just just loved it round the greens. Loved to be able to work something so differently. So many different ways to chip it, you know, to the same hole. Just loved it. Was that and, because uh, of the confidence, because of like the power that you was able to generate? Because you was always a big hitter on tour anyway, weren't you? Yeah. You, know, you, you could knock it out there for a bit. So yeah. was it like really honing on the delicacies around the greens? Yeah. Was, was the key for you? Without question. I, I would not have got my US tour card and European tour card without my chipping. My chipping saved my bacon all the time. You know, that was, uh, it's the fundamental of anyone's game. I mean, look at the, it's a bit of a dying breed, you know, Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson. You know, they're two players which, I mean, how good are they when they were, you know, spraying it all over the golf course, but to be able to play that big bendy shot from behind a tree or, you know, awkward lies and then, you know, round the greens, they would just play the magnificent shots and everyone was just like, oh, you know, look at Tiger, imagination at 16 at the Masters when he did that. Mickelson, you see it all the time, plays it with the same club actually, yeah. 64. He play it from everywhere, round the green, just 64, 64. But he just got so much faith in it. Mm. I mean, you know, go with your, your trusty Rusty, you know? I mean, Seeing as we've got a caddy here, well, how valuable would you, would you... Say that again, sorry. How much value would you put on a caddy? A good caddy is about, I would have said, but a good question. far between. What about a bad caddy? <laughs> Careful. Well, that's, a, that's a straight <laughs> question. Well, what, because a bad, he says nothing. A bad caddy? Because he says nothing. Well, that's probably good then. In a way. It's the guy that thinks he knows everything. It's oh, no, that, that gets you into trouble. No, Bob. No, 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 no. <laughs> Uh, one bad episode on a golf course we're pro that's it i must admit bunker play must be a, a thing I, I mean the average golfer always seems to really struggle with bunker play they always try and help the ball out of the bunker which then you take too much sand to begin with and you know flick the wrist and we see it all the time i you know everyone comes up to me how do you play this can't get out of bunkers i don't want any lips on our bunkers around the golf course and you know my club unfortunately they, you can put it out of bunkers now because the members had their way really? and uh but yeah, i always find like you know, a lot of people when they're over bunker shots, they, they're like trying to do this, but you've just seen, there's my ball and I've hit the sand here and I'm actually on my way up. So what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna fluff it, yeah. hit the lip, be back in my feet, back in the same same bloody, uh, you know, swing path. But I just always like to get a little bit steep, open the club, use the banks of the club is massive. For bunker play, it's gotta be used, doesn't it? Absolutely. It has to be used, I mean, it's a no brainer. But the more you open a club, the more bounce comes into play. So you turn what is, this is eight, would now then become, probably 12, 12 degrees, 13 degrees of bounce, which is then easy, because then you just get really aggressive into the sand. And because the bounce is in operation, the club's gonna wanna come back out again. So you can, it's like a game of opposites. It's like down to go up. It's totally bizarre, but it works. And then that's when you get the spin and everyone starts going crazy. How do you do that? So it's, uh, yeah. You were good at Sam, weren't you? No, not really. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were good at everything, uh, Andrew. I sort of, I wasn't precise enough with my striking. Oh really? You know, I used to do a lot of work just sort of drawing a line in the sand and sort of making sure I was getting the entry point correct, but when it came to tournament time, I always sort of built in that wee extra inch of sand. Yeah. What about paint, painting the picture of shots as well, like seeing the ball land and how it releases? Like Tiger said, he always seen the ball go in the hole no matter where he was on the golf course. He's seen the last like 10 foot and the ball disappearing on him. 
I just thought, my goodness, how precise is that? Vision. I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, and it really does work. I mean, when you're on your A game, and you know you don't think anything can go wrong, you start painting great pictures, and you actually see. I remember, I remember getting my call. I remember getting my when I got my US tour card. I could actually dictate the way I wanted the spin of the ball to go in towards the hole. I started. My picture was so clear and positive. I thought I could do anything with it. John, sorry. A bit of a Phil Mickelson, but just improvising. Just imagine, you'd be pretty unfortunate if that was uh, in the tree. Your lie <laughs> after getting a bit wayward. Just nearly put my eye out with tea. I've got it on the green, boys. I love that. John. I'll take that, you know. I mean, that's all right. Not bad, that. I think the crowd would go wild, wouldn't they? Yeah, this crowd's very subdued. I think they're all so uh, hung over, so to say. <laughs> I, I, including yourself. I did panic a little <laughs> bit with a little corridor right to the front door. It was a bit of carpet, and then the TV was in the corner. It was only a little square, and I'd be in there. You know, I was only 10 or 9, and uh, just hitting these shots, and I had ping pong balls. You were able to shape them and spin them on the carpet. It was brilliant. But then when I got the Shire, the pin would be there. I remember doing it at... Um, the old 11th, the second. Um, it used to be that far off the green. So I've gone for that. a spin shot. Fair lie. Wait, I was so obsessed with spin, I had to lob it from there. I wouldn't putt it, I just sent it up my left nostril. You know, trying to see if I could get it to come back like I could at home. It was mad. And I did it in medals, everything. Just standing there and just going, come on! And that was it. Just all day long doing that. I loved it. But then when it came to tournament golf I never feared an awkward shot then I never really did because I just remembered what I used to do so you just uh, yeah it's amazing what you do when you're young and fearless isn't it what is that John 60 yeah it's a 60 it's actually I nicked off Pete Cowan <laughs> it was uh, it was um, it was in the Callaway trailer and uh, he was teaching Stenson and he's gone and put it back in and I went <laughs> I had my eye on it have a look went, at the bottom yeah yeah. No, I've nicked it off you. <laughs> Good man, I would have done the same. <laughs> yeah, that's how I got it. Yeah, I seen Pete the other week and he said, uh, he said, yeah, you got my wedge. I said, yes, I have. It's very nice. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Driver, this. This is your driver. Yeah, I can't get rid of it. What do you mean? Why, why would you want to get rid of it? It's, it's your trusty, it's isn't it? Yeah, but it's the nickname, you see. I've got a nickname for it. A nickname for yeah, it? Yeah, I call what it Herpes. It? <laughs> Sorry? I call it herpes, I just can't get rid of it. Seriously, I'm joking with I call it, it's herpes, everyone knows it, it's herpes. I just, honestly, I've tried penicillin, I just can't get rid of it. It's my trusty. <laughs> Guaranteed <laughs> to go in the shite. Guaranteed to go in. Consistency is all about golf, isn't it? That's why my short game's good, I'm never knowing here. Oh, that's cracking. So that is herpes, seriously. Well, I tell you what, mate, trustees, trustees, you know, they're hard to get out of the bag, and I'm a bit of a sucker for, I don't really change my clubs. I'm a bit of a sucker. I've got yeah, one in garage and I've got forever. one in Portugal, just so, just in case. Yeah. Mate, they, I tell you what, that is such a popular club though. A lot of people, you know, a couple of people, mates of mine, you always said, I said, you know, pink drivers are nice, you know. They're all, I mean, it's, there's so many great drivers out there, mate. Of course, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's all this, really. Uh, At the end so, of the day, yeah. it's, this is the baby that suits you. Like, if uh, all the heads and the puzzles and stuff like that in all drivers and three woods are all different to a degree. But it's how they fit these, you know, that I shaft, did get fitted for that like eight, eight, nine years ago, maybe. Just can't. No. I like it, and yeah. that's the problem. I've well, bought drives in the past and sold them straight away. It looks lovely. You put that down, that is actually a Well, nice it needs a respray, re doesn't it? But that's uh, part of the character that's for me, I think. Character, it's funny. Mate. That's Hope, character. Uh, I would never change that. I would, I'd be yeah. proud of that. I am. Obviously, mate, it's just when, a they, nickname. when they zoom in with the camera and they see it all scuffed up, you go, yeah, see? The, Who needs they call a fancy? it patina finish. What? Patina finish. Patina finish? Yeah, aged. Like a whiskey over here, isn't it? <laughs> and a red wine. Do you like a wine or a whiskey? Uh, I'm a, more, I would have a red wine, I can't do whiskey. Mate. No. See, there you go. You want your red wines over. I'm a whiskey. Yeah, he's no. a whiskey. So no, we had whiskeys before we teed off, like yesterday. That, that yeah. did us. I was having whiskies at two o'clock this morning. So we're Johnny e. Morgan here at North Berwick. John, what have you have been watching last night, haven't you? In the bar. I have, mate. I tell you what, you were you were on form. You were on form. I was I was gonna gate crash it, I must admit. It was uh, they were talking a good game. Half for days. What am I called again? I don't know. Golf Logs UK. <laughs> oh yeah, Golf Logs UK. I tell you what, you gotta watch it. It's unbeatable. Good lad. Legend. Thank you.